What you're looking at is the best Model 1911 handgun ever built by human hands. Okay, well, maybe it's not the most bestest ever, but it sure seems that way to me. Why? Because I am the builder. It took me seven days to complete the major build under the direct instruction and supervision of Bob Marvel, a name revered among 1911 enthusiasts and top competitors. Some minor finish work and some small details were completed in the weeks that followed, and for about the past year, I've owned a prize that mere money can't buy. I covered the process of building the gun at Guns America, and I followed that story up with a part two that focused on shooting the finished product and using it in competition. If you haven't read those articles or seen those videos, I would urge you to do so. Links will be in the information below this video. So because I did do those articles, I'm not going to rehash that same information here. But I wanted to put something on my channel about my hand-built pistol. In this video, I just want to show what it's capable of with different types of ammunition, even in my feeble hands. It's just about reached the thousand round mark, so parts are starting to break in nicely now. I have had some feeding issues with one brand of magazines, Chip McCormick. All others have functioned flawlessly. And because I don't really expect you to believe what I say about my own gun, I previously enlisted the opinions of several fellow competitors and enthusiasts in the Part 2 story. But for this video, I'm honored to have a very special guest give a mini-review. That's incorporated in this video. You'll have to keep watching to see it. Just under three and three quarter pounds. What we're looking at here is the digital Lyman trigger pull gauge, a device any uh, shooter would be well advised to purchase. I got mine from Brownell. My name is Masad Ayub. I'm here today with my friend Justin Opinion and our little friend here. A beautiful pistol and I envy Justin's experience. He's the one who put this together under the guidance of Bob Marvel in a seven-day build-your-own custom 1911 program. The parts are Nighthawk primarily, uh, superb quality all the way across. The key thing, of course, is learning how to put a 1911 pistol together. When you get this kind of fit of the barrel hood to the breech face, when you get this kind of smoothness with the full-length guide rod and the key thing being how the parts fit and, and mate with one another. When you get the safety that goes on and off with just the right amount of pressure, the grip safety that releases when it should, not before and not too late, that very light take up, what we call in the trade good creep instead of bad creep, kind of like good cholesterol instead of bad cholesterol. Just enough movement to let you know the trigger pull is underway. Verify it was our idea. Okay, we're at the wall. A crisp, clean fall. No backlash whatsoever. The backlash being the movement of the trigger after the hammer has fallen. Because in that instant, the shot has not yet gone off. The bullet has not left the gun. And if the, tri the f finger continues its movement now unimpeded and slams into the back of the frame, it can move the gun. That's why target shooters prize a pistol that doesn't have backlash. This gun was designed for competition, and for that reason I wouldn't worry about the sub four pound trigger pull. Justin wanted it for IDPA, CDP, uh, the International Defensive Pistol Association's Custom Defense Pistol Division. What you got here is an exemplary 
specimen of the gunsmith's art. We'll be shooting it out here, and when, when a committed man like Justin puts it together under the eyes and with the advice of a great master like Bob Marvel, whom I've never personally met, but have always appreciated by reputation and by the quality of his work, you know you're going to have something special. Let's put on some ears and eyes and go out and see how this thing performs as it should. Sweet. Very sweet. I pulled one a little low in the group, but I can't blame the guy. <laughs> Very smooth reload with the uh, the, the belled uh, housing. Uh, very consistent trigger pull, yep. comfortable recoil. Uh, it's about 25 lines per inch yep. checkering. Very, very comfortable on the hand. The, uh, the grips, the VZ grips, shall we say, are not going to slip in one sand. Uh, might not want to do a thousand round a day class with them, but uh, they do take a pretty good bite. Look at this target. And that's how it's done by somebody who knows how to do it. Smooth recovery. Very sweet pistol. My compliments to the chefs. They say one of the best ways to find out if your gun is going to feed pretty much any kind of ammo, like hollow points or semi-wad cutters and things like that, is to try feeding empty cases. So let's see if we can feed an empty case. Yeah, baby. And again. Also, bears mentioning that this gun is pretty dirty. Hasn't been cleaned in a couple hundred rounds. So it's not like I cleaned it and buffed it and polished it and did anything special to prepare it. It will feed empty cases. Dirty. Remington. Do the middle. Freedom munitions. To the head.
JC Arms and Ammo. First time trying this ammo in 45. Let's see how she does. Six hour elite performance. Going to the bottom first. LAX 45 ACP 230 grain hardball. First time I've tried it. I like their 10 millimeter. Let's see how their 45 is. My stuff. Just an opinion. Hand load. Also 230 grain. Ball. All right, so I fired the first eight rounds of this LAX ammo, 45 ACP, 230 green ball, um, in an accuracy test, and I was impressed. It held its own with all the others, and it performed well. Let's go ahead and finish off a box of 50, see how it does, maybe with a little bit more uh, spirited shooting through the fantabulous Justin Opinion. 1911. I have had trouble with some magazines. Alright. Okay. Let's see. Now where were we? Okay.
Uh, Chip McCormick, power mag. I have been having trouble. In fact, one of these I've taken completely out of circulation. That might be another candidate. All right, moving on to a Kimber mag. I have had good fortune with these. Let's see how this one does. All right, that's how a good magazine will perform. Now, moving on to, uh-oh, my other Chip McCormick power mag. And uh, this is three of three. I have one that I've taken totally out of uh, totally out of service. Hopefully, this one will perform. I can feel a little hesitation there between the first and second round, but at least we fed. Now, uh, Cobra Mag. Cobra mags have so far also performed well. Ten round stainless steel magazine. This will finish up the last <laughs> of my patients. Come on, get in there. Come on. There we go. All right, this will finish up the last of a box of 50 LAX, 230 grain, 45 ACP. It has performed well. Let's see how this magazine performs. Good. A little hiccup at the start. Good stuff. Some perfecta. First time I've ever shot this, too. Not even sure if you can still get the stuff. Let's see how it does. Middle dot. This time I'm going to try a different hold. Alright, let's keep the playtime going, or try to. I'm going to finish off a box of my loads, my Justin Opinion hand loads, which I have uh, very high confidence in. I use them for, I've used them for years competitively and for fun and for doing videos and all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm back to the, uh, I'm back to the Chip McCormick magazines. I'm going to try them each one more time and see what happens. When I first built this gun, the first magazine I used was the Chip McCormick Power Mag, and I had problems with it, so right off the bat, this gun didn't really care for them. Wilson Combat Magazine. 1911s, you know, the magazine <laughs> is, uh, is one of the most common reasons for uh, malfunction. So, no matter what kind of 1911 you have, and again, this is a 
I'm not just saying this because I built it with these two very skilled hands. <laughs> but this is just about as perfect a 1911 as you're going to find. Because, not because I built it, which I did, <clears throat> but because I built it with almost all Nighthawk components and under the personal guidance and supervision of Bob Marvel. So this gun is all that and a bag of chips, but it doesn't like every magazine. It's always liked Wilson Combat though. Now, uh, Cobra Mag. I just have, I think, two Cobra Mags. Um, I got them just to try them out. And uh, so far, I don't think I have had any failures at all with the Cobra Mags. I've used them mostly in this pistol. I'm trying to think if I've used them in another 1911. I'm not sure. But uh, so far, real happy with the Cobra Mags. Keep it going. Another Cobra Man. Only had five in it. And this is the last one, also has five. This is a Kimber Mag. Kimber Pro Mag. I've also had very good luck with these magazines. Every 1911 I've tried them in. So recently when I was serving as staff on a MAG-40 class, which is Masada Ayub's intense immersion course in concealed carry and handgunnery, um, one of the traditional elements of that class is before the students shoot their final qualification to pass or fail, the staff shoots a um, demonstration or pace setter. And... There is a little bit of pressure in that you've got 30 students watching you and you're shooting next to Masada Ayub, who you know is going to shoot a perfect score, so no pressure. <laughs> so I decided that the Justin Opinion 1911 would be just the ticket, <laughs> and I shot my pace setter along with Mass and the other staff, and this is the result. I wasn't perfect, I'm sorry to say. But I was close. Mass scored the target himself, so I can't be accused of any cheating there. And I got a 299 out of 300. <laughs>